Hey there, Scorpio. Welcome to your reading for uh, the um, where you will be one year from now, is what I'm trying to spit out here, Scorpio. Uh, so let's see. <laughs> Turtle. That sounds about right, right, Scorpio? Uh, this card says Gaia on it. I kind of feel like, you know, there's a mythology of the turtle uh, carrying the earth through the universe, basically. And so for some of you, I feel like you have felt um, kind of like the weight of the world on your shoulders for a very long time or as if there's just too much to do. You know, that's like the feeling I get here. It's not even like, you know, you have the nine of wands here. It, it's not so much like I get the ten of wands type of feeling here, but it's very similar. Like there have been some burdens. Maybe you feel like you've wasted time or things uh, just haven't been going the right direction or like you just can't make up your mind about things. And maybe you just, that you know, that's kind of like it. <laughs> I don't know what I was going to say. And, um, you know, so I kind of feel like a year from now, you are going to feel much more clarity, much more like clear on the things that you want to do in your life. I do see here that you're going to have to leave some comfort zones, of course, which I think is true for everyone because of Pluto and Aquarius. It is, um, you know, uh, I, I think I said this, it might have been in your reading like a while ago that to me, I think we're entering into, or maybe we are in this period of time where it's like wearing an itchy sweater. <laughs> you know, it's like, it, it's like keeping us warm. We feel comfortable, but at the same time, we're itchy in certain places. And so I kind of get that feeling for you here in your reading, Scorpio. But again, you have this Gaia card. I, I also get a certain sense of support coming in here. And again, I don't know if I said this, but this is where you will be one year from now, this reading. And I kind of feel like you're feeling much more supported and connected with this turtle card. I do feel you want things to move forward much quicker. Like you want things to move forward faster, um, maybe still even a year from now. Is this a bad thing? No, because I definitely see results coming in for you. So, you know, it doesn't look too bad to me. Uh, you start off with the nine of wands. Nine of wands says, don't give up. I I do, I would like open up here. I kind of feel it's kind of interesting because I think you have a choice. <laughs> like as far, for those of you that want love, it's like you have a choice for in, in love. It's a very cut and dry type of energy that I get here. For some of you, I feel like you have to heal from a past heartbreak. Eight of swords, 10 of swords, five of swords as your last row. I actually don't feel like that's gonna be too bad. Uh, interestingly, even though that's like a terrible combination of cards, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I think this is what you have been through. Something very constricting, like a relationship that is very prickly. I get this like freaking prickly, I get this, such a prickliness in your reading, Scorpio. How is that for a Scorpio with the, you know, the stinger on your tail, right? But I get this prickly type of feeling from this last row. And it could be like a very uncomfortable relationship situation, or it could be something, it's almost like it's something that keeps poking you, you know, a past relationship. And, and not as in, you know, maybe it could be, it could be that a person keeps popping up in your life, but it, I also feel like it could be that you just, maybe you get triggered by certain thoughts or certain things. But it's almost as if this reading is saying, the second you move past it, the second you're gonna meet, you know, someone very solid for you, clearly going down this way, Ace of Cups, King of Cups. It's almost like you can't see past this right here, which is actually the Eight of Cups in your reading is kind of what I'm feeling, where it's like maybe someone walked away, you keep getting triggered by the situation here. Um, but it's like once you move past it, it, you're gonna find something so much better. So this might be only for those of you that are still a little bit holding on to something from the past. Again, not calling you out. It takes time, right, to move past these things. But if you, and, and maybe you're past it, but again, maybe you just get triggered by something. Um, but once you heal from this, I feel like you're, that's where your blessings are really gonna come in. You have the star card. You also have my favorite card in this other deck that I can never remember the name of. I think it's the Oracle of the Sevens or something like that. Uh, you have the Endless Possibilities card, which, you know, basically the star says, if you can dream it, you can have it, plain and simple. So I feel for a lot of you, there are like endless possibilities in all areas of your life, not just love, but whatever you want. But um, I kind of feel like you need to like work towards those things. What I would also say, Pluto and Aquarius, again, one year from now, pretty much, Pluto will be in Aquarius. Uh, well, or it'll be about to be into Aquarius, I should say. And depending on when you're watching this video, right, you might be watching this later on in the year. So that's fine too. These are timeless. But what I would say is that, you know, anything you can do to expose your desires would be very, very beneficial. 
You have the Page of Swords here. Again, for some of you, I feel like either someone is watching you or maybe you need to do like a cord cutting or something. I know that this reading is meant to be like where you will be in one year from now, but I, I almost feel like this could be avoided. Like you don't have to stay stuck in a, on a situation is kind of like what this is saying to me. For others, you could be spying on a person, which I feel like I say to you every single reading, right? Going this direction, King of Cups. I don't even think it has to be a water sign. It could be... Um, a fire sign is popping into my head or an earth sign could be an Aquarius as well that you have your eye on, but it's like someone has to take a risk with the five of swords. I feel like you get that um, in your reading, like every single reading that I do for you. With the nine of wands, you have the chariot. Yes, victory coming in for you. I'm pretty sure your last reading that I did for you for the week of February 20th. If you're watching this in the future, go back to the uh, February 23rd week of the 20th reading. And, um, you know, what I really feel here is that in that reading, I was talking all about how you are like one of the main signs that I really feel could be very focused on setting yourself apart, like making yourself unique over the next several years, making yourself um, different. And that's exactly what I would do here is I would be doing things that make you unique, different, like all that other stuff. Uh, and it will lead to a victory. With the um, star, you have the page of wands. You have these dreams, goals, wishes, things that you want to create in your life. The star literally just says you just have to do it. <laughs> I mean, it, the star does, but also the page of wands says go on the adventure. It's also funny that I said fire sign. They're, clearly, if you're attracting a person, this person has fire in their chart somewhere. But I would say it's like fire in an important part of their chart. Um, you know, like sun, moon, rising. Uh, it could be their like Venus or Jupiter as well, if, if we're talking about love here. So, you know, there you go. Uh, with the Page of Swords, you have the Six of Wands. Success, you see something as successful as well. Even outside of love, you know, Seven of Cups is like being spoiled for choice and you have this Endless Possibilities card. So clearly that you, you see that there are endless possibilities for you in your life right now. And these are gonna lead to victories with that Six of Wands. Like I said, I love this card. This card to me says that you can literally create, do, be, or have anything that you want or anything that you desire. I think the challenge for you is this right here. Strength, pretty simple reading. We have the chariot and the strength card. Chariot is a card of hard control in the tarot. The strength is the card of soft control in the tarot. Basically, even though this guy, he's like fighting this bull on a traditional strength card, the lady has her hands in the lion's mouth and the lion is submitting to her. But it kind of represents the fact that she is getting her own inner voice, her inner critic to submit to her. And she does this by working on it every single day. So I feel for a lot of you that you shouldn't necessarily be forcing things to happen. I would be using your powers of manifestation, number one. I would also be uh, just simply matching energy. It's like, it. It's not, it, it's hard, but it's not that hard to match an energy. Like people always say to me, like, I want to win the lottery, for example, which I, you know, whatever. But what I would say there is it's like, yeah, but you can't get from like where you are right now, if you have like money blocks, for example, to winning the lottery. But, you know, it's hard to go from having money blocks to being in the energy of winning the lottery, right? It's like two totally different things. But that's what the strength card says. It says, can you tame your inner beast? Can you match the energy of something you you want before you have it. And I feel for a lot of you, you could be working on that right now. Uh, you have the Eight of Cups. So again, I feel like this already happened. Like you could have, um, someone could have walked away from you. You could be walking away from a person um, who no longer serves you. You know, what's really interesting is that that lady is like leaning backwards almost. She kind of is looking back, but it's almost as if she doesn't care. So it seems to me like if you're going through a breakup or separation right now, or if you have been for the past like few months, it's almost like the person walked away, but I also feel like you didn't necessarily want to chase after them anyway. And this is not a bad thing, by the way, Scorpio. It's like, sometimes I think we feel sad. We don't want the person to go, but at the same time, maybe, you know, in the back of our mind, we know that the situation is stuck, not going anywhere, isn't right, whatever, right? And it's almost like you had one of those situations, but and now you have the seven of cups. So, you know, it, you could be spoiled for choice and love, but I just feel that you kind of have your eye on either, you either have your eye on a person already, or you have your eye, not your eye on a person. Maybe you have this, you know, have like a version of a person created in your head. So it's like, I feel like you kind of say, like you have this version, this idea of what a good relationship would look like, right? And it could be any person, but again, it could just be, 
maybe it's not a person that you're imagining. It could be the situation. And I feel like that Seven of Cups is kind of like, it's almost like saying the, you know, the options, having all the possibilities could be, or, you know, just like wanting, it's almost like you want the answer before you have the the person. And I, I those are the words that are popping to my head. Very confusing. But what I feel like it's saying, it's, it's almost like saying, that you could be kind of shooting yourself in the foot here by not making moves because maybe you're saying like, oh, this person doesn't, it's almost like you're saying it doesn't look like this exactly, so it's not the right person. So I would be careful of writing off good situations before you get into them. Um, with the uh, strength card, you have the tower. I feel like you've had tower moments. Every single sign has had the tower. I literally said in my first reading today that everybody's gonna get the tower. There will be, by, by the time we get to a year from now, there will be so many crazy things that have happened that you just won't believe it. Mark my words. So I'm shooting this on February 17th of 2023. I guarantee you in 2023, there will be some cra more crazy stuff uh, other than the crazy stuff that it's already happened. There will be a lot more going on. So, you know, just a sign of the times. I feel like, again, the best thing to do is to not be a person who's screaming the sky is falling when every little thing happens, right? Being in a position of strength, be of power, you know, uh, kind of being a solid foundation, that's really where it's at. Those the people that do that will be very successful because people need someone to follow. <laughs> so be a leader. With the Eight of Cups, you have the world. Yep, we talked about the world because you have that Gaia card. And the world is a card of achievements. So I feel like you're going, you're, it's like you're going through a portal, definitely experiencing a rebirth probably by the time you get to a year from now. I feel like you will feel different. And you could say that's true every year, but I feel like it's more true like a year from now. Uh, with the Seven of Cups, you have the Wheel of Fortune. Much more in control of your destiny. At least you want to be. You know, Seven of Cups, again, is endless possibilities, just like that endless possibility card. It is both those cards represent being spoiled for choice. The problem with choice is like, you know, there's like the illusion of choice. You know, they, they did a study like a long time ago where they gave people, uh, they let people who won a contest, they either gave them a t-shirt or they let them choose from like five different t-shirts, right? And it's like the people ha who got to choose, they were less satisfied with their choice than the people who were just given a t-shirt. The people who just got a t-shirt that didn't have a choice of what t-shirt they got were super happy, every single one of them, right? So it's like sometimes we think choices are a good thing, but really maybe choice is a bad thing. Maybe it, uh, you know, makes us more or less unhappy, right? Or it makes us more unhappy is what I should say. So I feel like you need to take control here. There's a lot of dreaming going on here with the Seven of Cups. And you also have the King of Cups. So it's like kind of like one of those things where you could be imagining a lot of outcomes to things that you want to create in your life, Scorpio. And I feel like this is saying you, you can imagine all day long, but until you manifest something down on earth, you don't know um, like what is going to happen. I kind of feel that some of you could be overthinking like starting a business. You're like, I'll do this, I'll do that, I'll do this. It's like, why not just, just pick one thing and make it happen, right? <laughs> because I feel like that's what will lead to the happiness is accomplishment, not the thinking about it. Uh, next, you have this vulture spirit it says nothing is wasted. I love this card. You know, vultures represent conservation of energy. Vultures do not really flap their wings, right? They soar around until they find food and then they start flapping their wings. So obviously some, some you know, some biologist expert, Steve Irwin co commented the other day, they're like, how do they get off the ground? They have to flap their wings. I'm like, okay, okay, buddy. Yes, of course. They have to flap their wings to get off the ground. I'm talking about when they're in the sky, right? So what I would say here is they represent conservation of energy. So it's like, I think a year from now, you're gonna be much better at using your energy, at saving your energy and all those things. You have the Six of Swords, the Ace of Cups, and the King of Cups. I also feel that there could be a love opportunity coming in for you. Uh, or you, I, I kind of feel like you will be in love with this version of a person that you've created in your head. It, you might, it, it, it's either a real person or a version of a person. Again, take it how it resonates. But what I would say here is that I feel like you're making a choice with the Ace of Cups. It's gonna be something very fulfilling. He's holding a very similar cup in his hand, if you can see that. So I kind of feel like there is love. Could be a water sign, but again, I really get like earth and fire for whatever reason, take it how it resonates. But, um, you know, that's really what's jumping into my head. And I feel like it's something very fulfilling. And it's also not a waste of time. Like maybe in the past you feel you've wasted time with people. This is not a waste of time. You have the Six of Swords as well. Kind of weird, all three er, uh, water signs have had the Six of Swords. And the Six of Swords, is a card of like moving on to calmer shores. It's a card of improvements as well. So I do feel like there are improvements coming in for you. What I would say, <coughs> excuse me, 
is that I feel like you need to see the improvements with the Eight of Swords. The Eight of Swords is only seeing one way of doing things. And it's like sometimes there can be an improvement that exists that's right in front of us, but we choose not to see it. So I feel like this is saying like, you know, open up to see the improvements that could come in for you. You have the King of Cups. And again, I feel like a year from now, you could be with a person and it doesn't matter what gender you're attracted to. I feel like it's a person who has very deep emotions. I do also get efficiency here. I feel like this person is very efficient. And, you know, especially with that vulture spirit, like this person, they might do a lot in life. And maybe to the outside world, people are like, how the hell do they accomplish so much? But maybe they don't do much at all. <laughs> I feel like they're just like very efficient with their time and the things that they do and all that other stuff. So uh, let's see here. With the Six of Swords, you have the Hermit. The Hermit could be a Virgo coming in for some of you, but for others, I feel like you're just kind of, you've been in Hermit mode and it makes sense to me that a year from now, you would be coming out of Hermit mode. With the Ace of Cups, you have the Queen of Wands. A lot of passion here, right? This is a learn as you go situation. I, I, you know, I feel if this is love coming in for you, it's a risk. I feel it's a risk because of past experiences. And I also feel it's a risk because um, well, you know, the five of swords is risk. The tower, I do feel like it could be a surprising connection. Like maybe you're just not expecting love when it comes in, or maybe you're interested in a person and you're not expecting them to be interested in you, but they are. I kind of feel with that queen of wands, there's a ton of attraction and a lot of desire, but I also feel this is a learn as you go situation. There's something different about it where maybe you have to learn you know, I, I don't really have any good examples, you know, other than maybe it's like long distance and maybe you've never done long distance. Maybe it's a person who has children and you've never done children. You know, it's like there's something that you have to learn about. With the King of Cups, you have the Five of Wands here. Definitely a risk. You know, the Five of Wands conflict and competition, but, um, you know, I always say it's a card of learning. <laughs> they are using sticks, the guys that are on this card normally. They're not using swords. So it's like they're learning how to fight and... You know, so it's really a card of learning. And I feel like you've been learning a lot, maybe through the conflicts that you've been going through. Uh, next, you have this full moon and Leo card. It says, go wild. Yeah, I, I feel like going, like number one, returning to nature is popping into my head here. So anything you can do to, you know, get back into nature would be a good idea. I also feel like this is saying break free from convention. You know, um, we have Pluto and Aquarius. Like I said, you know, even though Pluto, I don't care that Pluto retrogrades, you know, it, it moves into Aquarius in March this year. It's going to retrograde out very quickly as well. Well, pr pretty quickly, a few months. And then it's not going to move back in until next year, officially for 20 years. But what I would say is that, you know, convention is the way things have always been done. Pluto and Aquarius wants us to come up with new ways of doing things. And we literally see that as your first card, Eight of Swords. You have the Ten of Swords and Five of Swords. Eight of Swords is the way things have always been done. It is a card of, you know, only seeing one way of doing things. So if you're feeling stuck uh, at any time between now and next year, I would say I would look for other ways of doing things, plain and simple. You have the Ten of Swords, something being dead done over with, <laughs> laying something to rest. I actually feel pretty good about this. I feel like you are laying something. By the time you get to next year, something will have been laid to rest is literally what I'm getting. And you have the Five of Swords. See, I feel like some of you could be going against the grain here as well, Scorpio. You could be doing something that like certain people are criticizing you for. It is popping into my head. Like there could be people in your life, in your family life, in your personal life who like don't agree with some changes you're making. But, um, you know, it's your life. And I, I feel like you need to take this risk, whatever it is. Like maybe you're moving. It's kind of like the feeling I get here. Maybe you're moving and maybe people don't agree with that. But who cares? It's not their life. Maybe you're quitting your career and starting a business. And again, who cares? It's not their life. It's your life. So go wild, literally. That's what that says. <laughs> With the Eight of Swords, yes, take the leap of faith. You are overprepared. You know, the fool to me can represent being overprepared to do something. So I feel like you are overprepared to, um, you know, kind of take a major leap into some new possibilities. I feel like this is why people might be trying to protect you as well. You have the Endless Possibilities card and Seven of Cups. It's like, if you tell people, oh, I'm going to start a business or, oh, I'm going to move to another country or I'm going to do something different with my life, they're, they're going to be like, oh my God, well, I have to protect you from all these scary things. Seven of Cups, Endless Possibilities. This could happen, that could happen. But it's like, you know, if we live in the land of what ifs, we never get anything done. So, you know, take the risk. Uh, with the Ten of Swords, you have the Page of Swords here. It's like, like you have the Page of Swords twice. I would be careful of the postmortem. Like, you know, uh, a relationship dies. Why did it happen? Who the hell cares, right? You're entering into something much better. So I feel like the quicker, I said this at the beginning of the reading, the faster you let go of something, the better. With the Five of Swords, you have the Eight of Wands. 
quick success coming in for you. Uh, so I feel like there's quick success. I also feel like if someone is taking a risk to communicate with you, uh, there could be very solid connection here. I, I, I'm pretty sure I said this to you in your last reading as well, that some of you could be meeting a person through socializing, like getting out into public, hanging out with friends. It could be a friend as well. So I would, you know, get out in public, you know, whatever here, Scorpio, I would like do it, whatever, whatever you need to do. But there you go. Pretty interesting reading is what I would say here. Um, but we're gonna see if there's anything else that I missed with these cards, the Oracle of, of the Radiant Sun. You have this flattery card. Yes, I told you, I, I, I'm not sure if I said this or not, but I kind of feel like there is something different. You see how these two people are facing away from each other. These two people are facing towards each other. I kind of feel like maybe your past relationships were like this. You know, maybe you thought they were the same as you or that you had similarities but you actually didn't. I feel like whatever new person is coming in for you, you're actually similar. Not, um, you know, I don't think we should be exactly like the person. I don't wanna date myself. I don't know about you, <laughs> right? Hell no. So I want something different. And what I would say here is I feel like there are differences, but I feel like you are very similar. You know, there's more similarities maybe in your, like what you see for the future or whatever. Yeah, you have this patience card. I'm telling you right now, um, you know, I this this card reminds me of the Nine of Pentacles a little bit. You know, she even, she kind of looks like the Nine of Pentacles, but there's two people here and this is also Jupiter in Virgo. I kind of feel like it could be a person who has Jupiter in Virgo. Um, you have Virgo in the reading as well. So, you know, there's also Taurus and Leo up there. So we talked about that during the reading, but um, what I would say here, is I definitely feel this could be talking about like true love coming in for you. I feel like it's someone very successful. I feel like this person kind of like moves mountains or something like that. Like I feel like they're, they're the type of person who has overcome a lot in life as well. Maybe you kind of recognize that. Maybe that's the similarity. Uh, next, you have this revenge card. Again, I would let the past go. No revenge this year. Uh, you know, we had Mars retrograde and I always tell people, be very careful of Mars retrograde. It's never a good idea to try to get revenge during Mars retrograde. It'll always come back to bite you. Uh, next you have this generosity card. I feel like a year from now, you're going to be surprised at how generous situations like the, you feel like the universe is being, maybe you've been, you know, the universe has been skimping <laughs> and I feel like there's much more abundance coming in for you by this time next year. And uh, finally, you have this speculation card. Yes, no speculation, Scorpio, seven of cups, endless possibilities. I love that endless possibilities card, but it's like, again, you can dream about something all day long, but until you actually make it a reality, you won't know what it is. This is Pluto and Aquarius, I'm telling you right now. Not only that, we have Saturn going to Pisces. I said this to Pisces that, you know, it's like Neptune is in Pisces right now, um, but you know, Pisces rules the feet and Neptune and Pisces like hovering above the ground. It's like your feet aren't even touching the ground. We have Saturn going into Pisces. For you water signs, especially for you Scorpio, it's gonna be like your feet are coming back down to ground, to, to the earth, right? So a year from now, you might actually find yourself um, accomplishing a lot more. You know, along with this is, more failures, but you know, again, uh, anyone who's successful has a lot of failures under their belt. So, you know, I think school makes it feel, makes us feel like, oh, we can't get anything wrong, but it's actually, you know, the people who are wrong the most are also maybe the most successful. <laughs> Not always true, of course, but I'm just saying the people who take the most chances, right, are the ones that, you know, eventually you're going to be right is what I'm trying to say here. But I feel like there's something you know, this could definitely be in love where you have to take some sort of risk to like find out if a person is interested in you or whatever. And I would do it because I feel like a year from now you'll be in a relationship. But a uh, pretty interesting reading, Scorpio. So thank you for being here. Really appreciate it. And definitely enjoy your year.